Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we are talking about energy healing. Do you know what an energy healing is? How can healing and shifting your energy change your life? Are you curious how we create clutter in our energy field? Would you like to know why you should listen to your body and what your physical pain might be telling you on an emotional level? Let's continue our month as we focus on some, some summertime. Ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach Julie Caraccio on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out as she teaches you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life. Julie Caraccio destroys the box and examines clutter in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, relationships, health, finances, and more. Hey everyone, I'm super excited for today's guest. I've had the privilege of working with her. I wanted to first share a quote with you though. I know on previous episodes I have talked about a quote from Dr. Oz and I actually tracked it down. And what amazed me was he said this almost 10 years ago. So here's the full quote. We're beginning now to understand things that we know in our hearts were true, but could not measure. As we get better at understanding how little we know about the body, we begin to realize that the next big frontier in medicine is energy medicine. It's not the mechanistic parts of the joints moving. It's not the chemistry of our bodies. It's understanding for the first time how energy influences how we feel. Dr. Mehmet Oz, November 20th, 2007 on The Oprah Show. I have had the privilege of working with today's guest. I'm super excited that she's on. As much as I believe in things and I ask myself what else is possible, I always retain what I would consider a healthy amount of skepticism. However, one thing that I hope never changes about me is my ability to be in awe, to be amazed. And after my healing with Kathleen, I truly felt that. She does an interesting combination of different modalities, and that's one th reason why I wanted to have her on, because there are so many different paths in energy healing, and you can find what works for you. I was truly in awe as we begun to work together, and I just want to remind you, you know, energy, we don't have to be in the same room. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina in the States, and Kathleen is, it looked from the map, like kind of a forest in Australia, and energy goes across Skype. It goes across the podcast as I'm talking to you. And it's just amazing to me that two people in two different parts of the world can work together and support and help shift energy. I was in awe though, because Kathleen was able to read my field and she shared things that she couldn't have known. I had never met her. I was referred to her by someone who's going to be an upcoming guest on the podcast. And I was just blown away by what she was reading in my field because there are things that, again, she couldn't have known. So it just reinforced to me, this stuff is real. And the more I do my personal development, I know you all know I talk about that a lot. I'm learning and what I've been working on a lot lately in with the classes that I take is working in clearing stuff in the field so it doesn't become disease. So if we get it when it's kind of out in the aura, and we'll have Kathleen talk about that a little bit, that I can clear it before it becomes disease. And what I try to see pain and health challenges, first as a challenge, not an issue, try to spin it to a little bit of the positive, is what is, it's a guidepost. And what is it signaling me to me that I need to change? What is it saying? Saying, hey, Julie, wake up, pay attention. We've got something here that you need to address. And so trying to view it from that perspective instead of, oh my gosh, I'm in pain. I've got to change something and getting more and more upset and adding to that instead of taking a moment to take a step back and figure out, okay, what's going on? What emotions are happening? What can I course correct to do? All right, let me tell you about today's guest. Kathleen O'Keefe is passionate about health and well-being and guides you to listen to that inner voice, 
trust it, and become the healthiest, happiest individual you can be. She lives with her family in the beautiful town of Karanda in far north Queensland. Kathleen was always attracted to natural therapies and has studied Australian bush flower essences, Reiki levels one through master, the Simply Healed method, the Crystal Awakening Intensive, and Aura and Color Energy Healing. She has her health coach training from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Drawing on this knowledge, Kathleen creates a completely personalized roadmap to health that suits your unique body, lifestyle, preferences, and goals. She believes to be balanced, we must look at all layers and levels of our being, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Welcome, Kathleen. Hi, Julie. How are you? Fantastic. I'm so excited you're on the show today. But let's get started because we've got lots of good stuff to talk about energy healing. So my first question is, what exactly is an energy healing? And what's going on when you're working with someone and doing a healing? Well, energy healing is something we need to connect with because we're a big ball of energy in a human body, having a human experience, an earthly experience. Uh, when we go through any kind of stress or trauma, it really affects our subtle bodies and our chakras. So I'm going to use terminology here today that people might not be really familiar with, but we, you know, we can work that out as we go, I'm sure. Um, and, and, you know, the energy gets stuck, simply stuck mm -hmm. or blocked. You know, we repress things and we hold on to stuff and it really does mess with the energetic parts of our body. So what I do is I act like a conduit allowing universal healing energy through me, not from me, and using the modalities that I've been attuned to and that I've learnt over the years to help people bring back some balance and get them centred and grounded. And, you know, when they're, when they're in that space, it's all about having clarity for the next move. So that, that's, that's it in a nutshell. When I did the healing with you, what was a kind of a guidepost for me is the best way I can describe it is I felt expanded. Like I just felt like I was a universe. I was as big as a universe. And so I, that's when I knew things had shifted and that I could tell, you know, you feel lighter, but you know, that was kind of my body, my intuition, whatever you want to call it saying, okay, Julie, you shifted that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a beautiful explanation because the expansion word, perfect, because a lot of the time in life and especially today, I mean, we're so bombarded with information. We're overloaded. Mm -hmm. We're overwhelmed. Everything's happening. You know, we're these super people that just do so much in, you know, in our, in our little day and we don't take any, well, sometimes we don't take any time out for just us and our energy really dampens and it mm -hmm. feels heavy. And when I do a healing session or when you have any kind of energy healing session, it should be that word. It should feel like your energy has expanded because it's about raising your vibration. Fantastic. So explain to us, how does our energy field get cluttered? Life. Life gets <laughs> in the way, you know. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's the overwhelm, you know, and especially ever since the internet. I mean, I love technology in the sense I get to meet people like you I've made some really good friends I, I see people globally so I mean you know it works for good but it can also work for evil mm -hmm, <laughs> in a sense yeah. I know that's a pretty harsh word but you know we get a bit sucked into it we're using devices a lot these days and you know they they have electromagnetic fields which messes with our energy um, you know, we, we, we're busy people. Some people have uh, families that they've got to deal with plus a 40 hour plus working week. Um, you know, then we've got diet, uh, mm -hmm. emotions that get stuck. You know, are we eating the right food? Are we looking after the body that our energy uh, lives in? So, you know, so many things can get in the way and mess with our energy. I mean, you know, it's, it sounds like a lot, but, you know, it's, it's pretty simple to kind of bring it back and to get that connection uh, happening so that you know what the next move is when you're feeling a certain way. So I wanted to ask you, I take, I do a women's group 
couple women's group every month. And so last month we were led in an exercise and hopefully correct me if I'm wrong, but this makes sense to me. So yeah. what we worked on was clearing. So if sorry for the podcast listeners, it'll be easier for the YouTube. So kind of clearing the space. And I don't know if it's, if I'm remembering correctly, like the space between the aura or if it is aura, but so like disease is like, Hey, I'm hanging out in my, your aura right now and I'm in your energy field and I haven't quite gotten to the physical. So if I'm having, and you know, please feel free to use an example, it's kind of hanging out here. So I have the ability to help shift that and change that before it manifests in the body. Am I understanding? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, Correct. Um, so we have we have chakras, and we have a lot of chakras. But most people, most healers that you'll talk to, will deal with the seven main chakras. So they go from the base of the spine to the top of the head, and they're governed by color and sound vibration. They govern areas of the physical body, and they spin. So they allow the energy in and out between our subtle bodies, which make up our aura and our physical body. So you're right, you've got, so in our, in our subtle bodies, you know, the subtle bodies are like the emotional body, the mental body, the auric body, the buddhic body, and so forth. So when you've got something to do with your emotions going on, so you're really angry or you're really resentful, but you're not processing those emotions in a healthy way, you're kind of shoving that down, you're mm -hmm. holding onto it, you're churning it over and over and over, mm -hmm. you know, that will manifest down into the physical body. Our physical body is that vehicle to communicate with us. So it's the thing that sends out the red flag. So if something's going on, if you've got a pain, you've got an ailment, you know, there's, there's that dis-ease in your physical body, then it's a red flag. It's trying to tell you something and you have an opportunity there to process. So if, you know, as I use the example of emotions, you know, you need to maybe talk about that. You need to do some journaling about that, you, you know, to sit and just be with it, to be mindful and to kind of feel where that might be happening, you know, and to reflect or know or give yourself the space to know what the next step is to then process it healthily. And you'll find a lot of the time that physical ailment, that little ache or pain or that disease, it will be gone. It's, it's pretty amazing stuff. So yeah, exactly. When you're doing a, a clearing, because anything to do with healing and clearing is also setting a very strong intention. It's as simple as that. So with you setting up that space, and creating a strong intention of clearing whatever it is in your aura that is, you know, troubling you, that may not be feeling really great. It may be the thing that you're needing to work through before it does manifest down into the physical body. Then, you know, that's exactly what's happening because you have set that very strong intention. I have about right now, of poison ivy. Now I'm oh. super allergic, but so I did some research on this and you know what I always tell people you, and when I worked with you, I know this, you work with my, what I'd call sovereign self, higher self with my wisdom. So I know what's best mm -hmm. for me. And when I work with someone, I know it's just my job to support you and bring that up. So anyway, I did some research and I had to kind of laugh. So poison ivy, what I found out was anger and I yeah. thought it's right on. And last year I didn't get any doing yard yeah, work, but right. I've been doing a lot of clearing and, and working a lot and dealing with a lot of sadness layers. And I know underneath that mm. is anger. And I was like, okay, well, I want to get rid of the poison ivy. Let's clear some anger to help that go away more quickly. So, right. And anything to do with inflammation, whether it's like a skin rash or, you know, um, we don't get poison ivy here, but we have other things in the bush that create that kind of feeling. So I get it. Um, yeah, it's, it's usually anything to do with inflammation, redness, that itch, you know, that mm -hmm. anger in the skin uh, that symbolizes exactly the emotion that you're probably struggling with the most. I mean, our body is such an amazing tool to use when we get to know what it symbolizes. So, for example, you know, people suffer a lot with backache, mm -hmm. you know, so our back, our spine is our body's support. It's part of the skeletal system that supports our body. And so depending on the part of the back can depend on where in your life you're lacking support or having trouble around 
being supported. So, you know, once you kind of know what the physical body represents, it's, it's really a wonderful tool to use when we're dealing with emotional stuff. Anxious, exhausted, stressed out, losing your mind, ready to get your life back. Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie Caraccio can support you. So how do we shift that? How do we clear that energy? You had mentioned a moment ago about setting intention, which was was Mm -hmm. part of it. So how else would we, obviously we can come and see someone like you, but how would someone who's just listening, what could they do? Well, it's simply, um, I say simply a lot, I realize, but I'm a simple kind of gal. Um, I like things being easy. I don't think we have to complicate, uh, especially healing, anything in life, but especially healing. Um, we need to create a toolbox. So it's a, what I call a spiritual toolbox mm-hmm. and all the things you learn along the way from podcasts or, you know, YouTubes like this, you've really got to find what resonates with you. Mm-hmm. And when I say resonates, you know, that, that interests you, that piques your interest. That's something that you think you could possibly do. They're the things you want to kind of take, learn and put in your toolbox. And every now and again, you should kind of do a little bit Mm -hmm. of a um, stock take of that toolbox, you know, get rid of things Mm -hmm. that aren't working for you, add a few more things. It's not something you can physically see. It's something that you just have. Uh, Sometimes I get people to write them down so that they've got like a little bit of a list when they're new to energy healing or new to this kind of work, you know, because we do need that little prompt. Um, But things like easy breath. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we breathe every day unconsciously. It keeps us alive. Mm -hmm. But do we breathe properly? You know, breath is such an amazing healing tool. So uh, mindfulness, but again, that comes back to breathing because we use the breath to bring ourselves into a mindful state. Grounding, you know, grounding or earthing. I mean, there's Mm -hmm. so much, so much research has been done on this. I mean, you can simply Google these things and you'll just get the effects, how they, how they work on your physical body, on your emotional state. Like there's so much information out there for the people that are a little bit, oh, that all sounds a little mm-hmm. bit woo-woo, but it's becoming such mainstream. Meditation. Now, meditation's massively um, overthought. You know, people's yeah. perception around meditation is what stops them from really connecting in with it and giving it a go because a lot of people will think that they need to sit for an hour mm-hmm. in a particular position and chant, whereas it can take five minutes. So, um, so meditation, breathing, mindfulness, which really comes back to the first two I just mentioned, um, visualization is simply, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes when you can't get outside or, you know, connect with the earth, you might want to sit and, and have a little bit of a visualization, getting in the shower and visualizing the water being like white light. So mm-hmm. like a healing energy and allowing that to wash over and through you simply journaling, writing out your feelings so that the, all this stuff that's ruminating in your head space is out on paper and when you see it from that perspective you kind of can go oh hang on a minute reprioritize or maybe you're going to think about something different as with journaling a conversation but with the right person Mm -hmm. you know we have friends we have family but to be honest a lot of them really don't make great counselors you know, they're too connected emotionally. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a good idea to kind of really pick your friends and family that you'll speak to carefully as much as we love them. Um, and also, if you can't do that, then you need to reach out and find someone that you can because you need a safe space. A lot of the time I find talking things out, it, when you say things out loud and you hear your own voice, man, it's such a healing, you know. It's and powerful. when you've got someone... It's so powerful. And you've got someone holding the right space. It's not like holding you to every word you say, who's not having that expectation of if you kind of say something out loud, then that's how it is because it gives you an opportunity to go, that's not really how I feel. 
Mm-hmm. You know, have you ever had that conversation? You're kind of saying things that this is going on, this is going on, this is how I feel. And then you kind of go, hang on a minute. That's not how I feel. Wow. Maybe I've been overthinking this. Maybe I'm not thinking in the right kind of space. And then all of a sudden you're having this conversation and there's, there's so much gold in it, you know? So breathing, meditation, earthing, conversation, journaling. I mean, there's so many things we, I mean, I could sit here and probably rattle off. Heaps the, more, right. But yeah. But they're, they're easy things to do. And, you know, when it comes to something like grounding or earthing yourself out, it's not about having to take extra time out in your day. You know, you could do that. I, I know it's, it's a little bit different for people maybe in your country because a lot of people that live in the big cities um, don't have a clothesline. So for me, when I, I'm here in Australia and I'll say to people, you know, when you're hanging out your clothes, simply kick your shoes off and do it w- mm-hmm. with intention that you're grounding and earthing out whilst you're doing that. If that's what it takes to get you started until you can kind of make it a little bit of a priority until you can feel the effects and then you know it starts to have an impact on your body mind and soul then people start to prioritize and will make time will take time out of their day but it can start from five minutes to taking that hour it depends on your situation and where you are and what you can do and that permission slip people need to know that it only takes a moment. So when you get that permission sleep, it's like, oh, well, maybe I could do that, you know, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can build upon that. Absolutely. Because, you know, it's the pressure of thinking that you have to do something in a particular way for a, a, a big amount of time when you've already got so much going on. And that's the whole reason you're overwhelmed, exactly. you know. So you, you want to just start small. And, you know, um, I mean, that's probably not the best example because it's not possible everywhere in the world hanging out your washing on the clothesline. But, you know, it's even standing and doing the dishes or packing the dishwasher. You can bring some mindful, you Mm -hmm. know, setting strong intentions into daily, brushing your teeth, you know, when you're brushing your teeth. So things that you already do, we can add little mindful intentional things in and once people kind of start to get that into their mindset and feel a little bit of an impact it grows from there now i also wanted you shared this with me when we were setting up the interview which i thought was interesting because you come from an energy healing perspective and i come from a from a clutter but you said after healing you usually need to do some organizing and cleaning and i want you to talk about how that's connected because you know the podcast is clearing the clutter inside and out and so when i have someone yeah. like you i'm like look it's not just me here's yeah. someone from a totally different field to so talk about your perspective and how you think that's yeah. connected sure well i mean when you do energy healing you shift stuff you you declutter your energy field you know you have this weight and all this clutter and when I work with someone it's about clearing that personally when I've had healings done over many years I've always gone home and kind of found myself clearing out that drawer that cupboard that corner that's been sitting there looking at me and really like messing with my head for weeks months however long and all of a sudden it's like it's done and it's like symbolic to what's just gone on within me it's like my space for me um, with my healing abilities if my place is in chaos I I don't deal well in my headspace so it's very connected for me and I think a lot of people that are uh, clairsentient they call it so it's a feeling kind Mm -hmm. of ability so when you're when you're cluttered and chaotic in your space in your physical space your home your office your bedroom it messes with your energy and your headspace. When you have a healing and you kind of balance that out, it's like you have to come home and, and have that sorted in your space. But it's really quite easy to do it. it. For me, it's just like, you know, all of a sudden my windows are clean and it's like, oh, that's better. It's like I can see clearer now. Or because I can see clearer now, I need to be able to see out my windows. So that's a real personal thing. I mean, I'm, I don't, I don't really know if it happens with every single client but when I have brought it up 
it's resonated with a lot of people. They kind of go, yeah, oh my God, you know, oh, I went mm-hmm. home from this and, and I found that I kind of, you know, had this particular space in my house and I just sorted it. So, you know, sometimes when we clear the clutter out of our energy, it's a lot easier to do it in our physical space. Uh, I believe that again, if you start to clear your physical clutter, I worked with clients yeah. and then they can start with the emotional or mental or spiritual, whatever it's, I really believe vice versa. It really are synergy and support each other. And when you start That's on it. one, it's going to have an effect on the other. Absolutely. So it works both ways. You know, some people might need to kind of get that energy, uh, sorry, that physical space sorted. And then it does, like you say, it sort of shifts something from them energetically. Whereas a lot of people that might need to come in and have an energetic clearing first to kind of get into that physical space and be able to do it. So, you know, when there's a block or a stuckness, either way, it's a healing. Like what you do is healing. It's amazing because it's all energy. At the end of the day, it's all energy. It is. And I wanted also have you tell us, and if you're on YouTube, you get a little show and tell. So you introduced me to... Australian bush flower essences. And I know here in the States are a Bach remedy and different things. So these are little tinctures, but you can also get them in cream and different forms. What is, cause it's about energy. What are flower essences and what's going on with them? Okay. So flower essences are a vibrational medicine. There's no part of the flower or plant physically, a physical part of the flower and plant in that essence. So, what happens is how they make them really simply is they pick the flowers from the plant, the tree or the bush. They place them in a bowl of water and sit them in the sun for at least four hours. And this imprints the essence from the flower, like the energy of the flower onto the water. So the water acts like a conduit. They mix that with brandy for the um, preservative and that makes a mother tincture. And with vibrational medicines, a little bit, a little bit similar to homeopathics, less is more. So, you know, you've got a mother tincture, then it's made into a stock bottle. And then from the stock bottle, you can make a dosage bottle. And they work on the emotional body. So those flowers help you with those stuck emotions. So when there's anger, for instance, you know, you'll reach for mountain devil in that range. And that will help release that anger from the emotional body. And, you know, that might be manifesting in your physical body as a pain or an ailment. You know, I remember I I picked that one because as an example, I struggled years and years ago when in my marriage, like with my husband, I think we're going through a little bit of a rough spot. And I was so angry. I was just so angry and resentful. And I started taking Mountain Devil and I got this rash come up on my belly. Like it wasn't itchy. It wasn't painful. It was just this really blotchy kind of rash on my belly. And our belly is our hara. It's our our emotional center. It's where most of our organs are and each organ represents an emotion. So I'm like, wow, you know, what's going on like with my belly? And then it kind of clicked. I'm like, hang on a minute. And I remember like, you know, a week into taking it, we went into town or something with the kids and he was kind of going, you're looking at me differently. Like, you know, it's like I, I was softening, you know, I was mm-hmm. obviously releasing this pent up, built up anger because and he knew it because I was probably looking at him with this rage in my eyes Uh, but I was softening and I was looking at him differently the tone in my voice was different when I was speaking to him and he picked it like he knew it and we just had this conversation about it and I'm like oh my goodness it's the mountain devil and that's why I've got a rash like all these angers Mm kind of coming out now not to say that it's you know when you take the essences it's going to come out on a physical level like that but it was just it's just a good example and I think sometimes that happens because as humans Mm -hmm. we need that tangibility we need to see proof so for me that was my proof and and the confirmation from my husband was my proof and we worked through that you know it was simply me holding on to something that was making it worse so so they work on the emotional body they help clear up those blocked emotions they're very subtle um they can, they're mostly subtle. They can have a big impact. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when you take them, it can bring the emotions to the surface. So, you know, you might have a day where you're feeling that emotion quite intensely. Um, that, that will pass. But if it is an issue, you can just stop taking it for a day and then come back to it just to give your energy a little bit of a moment to settle. 
So they're amazing. They don't get in the way of any other medications. Mm -hmm. If it's not the right one, it simply won't work. So it's very vibrational. It really, it helps align, uh, you know, you, you, you align with the energy, the healing aspect of that flower within your own energy. So that's how it works. Oh, that's fantastic. And that's something, mm. a small way that someone can start with. And usually oh. I know with, you know, you had, when we worked together, you recommend the, these flower essences to me, but mm. I know like with Bach, they tell you this mm. for whatever. And so that's something, yep. just a simple way, again, and not a big deal. You take in the morning, take at night, that takes you five seconds. Totally. And you know, there are, uh, there are quite a few flower ranges out there in the world i know i just actually bought a beautiful book um and it's by an american girl i think her name is katie hess and she does uh, it was called flower evolution the book so she um she's someone else in in your country that's doing flower essences i know there's a range i'm pretty sure from california but yeah like the bark remedies have been around for a very long time edward bark i looked into those but and i kind of come across the australian bush flower essences and for me living in australia mm -hmm. you know i align with that energy so i kind of when i was you know what will i study which one will i pick um, so I chose that one. And whilst I work on anyone in the world, you want something that's easily accessible. So, I mean, everything's pretty accessible online, but you know, if you've got something close by that resonates with you, like check it out. It's right. really, they're a really amazing, um, vibrational medicine, something like you say, as you know, that we can do simply for ourselves. Um, and also on that level of sometimes doing the exercises feels a bit woo woo for people, but if mm -hmm. they've got something tangible that they can hold and they can take and they feel that effect, you know, that's a good place to start for sure. So can you lead us in your choice an exercise, maybe to feel energy, sense energy, what do you ever, you feel moved to do, but maybe essences are a great thing for people to check out. But if there's a exercise that you think people benefit from. Well, when it comes to exercises, I would always come back to a mindful mindfulness exercise and it really is the breath. Um, so it, when it comes to breathing exercises, of course, we can do very simple ones or we can get into ones that, you know, take, take a while. So there is one that I was taught quite a, couple, quite a few years ago called the 478 breath. And that simply takes just over a minute for, for those time poor people. And I always include them because it's the majority of the world. You know, mm -hmm. everyone, everyone's like, I don't have time, 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 time. So, you know, when, and I go, come on, you can give yourself just over a minute just to stop and do mm -hmm. this exercise. So it's simply breathing in for the count of four, holding the breath for the count of seven and blowing the breath out for the count of eight. And you do that for four rounds. And you do it morning and night. So when you wake up and just before you go to bed. And that just kind of puts you in a really nice state. As soon as you close down your eyes and you start to breathe consciously, you go into your parasympathetic nervous system, mm. which is your rest and digest, instead of being in our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight. And that really connects us with that adrenal fatigue. Uh, it impacts our adrenal. And then add coffee and lack of sleep to that you know then we start to really like you know have issues so a simple breathing exercise um, like that is really good you need to just connect the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth and when you blow out on the eight count you blow around your tongue so it's mm -hmm. uh, I, I can give an example is that all right if I just oh yes round? yes okay so I'm not for the podcasters so much but for the YouTube but for the podcasters if you look up Dr. Andrew Wheel, W-E-I-L, 478 breath. He's got a video. And so that's something that maybe you could do so that you could see uh, an example of what it looks like and for the YouTubers as well, because he's, he's a pretty cool doctor. Um, okay, so it's connecting the tip of the tongue with the roof of your mouth just behind your teeth. And you breathe in for four. Hold for seven. And blow out for the eight there. And so that's just 
blowing around the tongue, keeping that tongue connected. Four rounds, morning and night. That's a simple exercise that just, you know, really gets into our nervous system. The Do you keep saying you'll declutter, get organised or pursue your dream someday, but someday hasn't come? Learn how Julie Caraccio can support you at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. The other mindfulness exercise that I would recommend if you want to kind of take it to the next level, especially if you're someone who loves crystals, which I'm a little bit of a crystal junkie. <laughs> so if you've got a favorite crystal, um, if you haven't and you're interested, a simple clear quartz would be amazing because clear quartz really helps um, expand your energy. It helps with your vibration. They all do. I mean, but the clear quartz, it's just one of those great all rounders. So simply sitting with your feet on the flat on the floor, straight spine, as you should do in your breathing exercise, holding that crystal and just bring your mind space, your thoughts to that crystal and just kind of see where you go with it. It's like following the energy. You're breathing in, you're breathing out, but you've kind of got something tangible in your hand. And when you quieten down your mind and you settle your body with the breathing, you might feel a little tingle. You might feel a little bit of a vibration and you might just see where that goes. It, you might feel it kind of run up your arms or run somewhere through to your body. So the energy of that crystal will find the blocks in your body and work through them. Now, if you're very new and you don't feel anything, please don't worry because, you know, we're not always used to the new mm -hmm. sensations that this brings up. So be patient, you know, patience is a virtue and we all need to learn a bit of it, you know? Um, and I say that a little bit of like tongue in cheek because in the early days, oh, I had to really work hard at patience. <laughs> Raising my hand here. You're not yeah. alone. I know I'm not alone. So, and just know that I, you know, I'm coming from experience and that's my thing. You know, I'm really very wary of how I speak and what I share, but I do mm -hmm. come from my own experience. So I really feel like I walk my talk, but it's, you know, I've had some really amazing experiences with that simple exercise where I've found the energy of the crystal kind of actually go to a point of pain in my body mm -hmm. and I've felt it unravel so, you know, with a bit of practice and with a bit of slowing down and bringing that awareness to the body, you know, you'll start to get to know these little sensations and just trust. It's like a, it's, it's a mindfulness exercise, but it's also a trust exercise. And that's the one I love to get people to connect back with their body because you have to take the time out and really mm -hmm. feel and be aware. Mm -hmm. And I think we get very disconnected from our physical body and that's where we're not seeing or hearing the red flags that are coming up when our body's trying to tell us something. We just keep ignoring it or we're in denial about it. You know, So that exercise is something that you can take your time with uh, if you've got a little bit of time. Um, and then you've got the breathing exercise when you are time poor and you're that person that's like, I don't have time for this stuff. And it's a little bit woo woo. So my, you know, I'm not going to give you an hour, but yeah. So stick with that four, seven, eight breath, do a little bit of research on it, have a go, commit for a week, morning and night for a week, and then stop and see if you can have that, um, you know, that, that moment of being able to compare. How did I feel in that week compared to mm -hmm. this week where I haven't done it? Same with the exercise with the crystal, you know, do that maybe every day for a few days at least, even the week, and then maybe pull back and stop and just see if you can kind of feel if there's a difference. Did you have a better week? You know, and it's always great to start your day with these things, but then I'll always say do it when you can. Mm -hmm. Don't kind of think that it has to be done in the morning and then you wake up and your morning's really busy, especially if you've got children, and then you think, oh, well, I'll have to try again tomorrow. Just do it when you can. But, of course, if you do anything in the morning or just before bed, your energy's in a pretty good space, you know, to mm -hmm. accept or absorb or take that on board. But again, I just say do it whenever. There's no real rules set in concrete. We've just got to grab those opportunities when we can. And once they settle with us, 
we tend to then start to prioritize and make time for these wonderful things. I also so think time. Yeah. The yes. time opens yeah. up for us when we commit to that, that somehow everything so falls true. into place and the space opens for you to be able to, to do those things. It's like the universe rewards you with time. You know, when you take the time to do something for yourself, that's a little bit of self-care, you know, mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden it's like the day seems to go a little bit slower. Things seem a little bit calmer, you know, it's like, oh gosh, you know, it's only 10 o'clock. Wow. You know, it's, it's amazing. You're so right, but it, it is, it's like a reward. So it's really cool. Now those are two great exercises that you gave us. And so they're going to be part of our take actions because one of the things about I'm um, the podcast and that I say again and again is half awareness, half taking action. So two of our take actions are the four, seven, eight breath and, yep. and taking time with a crystal and tuning in with that. Are there any other take actions that you have for all our listeners and viewers? And if not, it's okay. Right. Two's good. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Grounding. <laughs> no worries. I've got a list here for everyone. You guys have got a lot of homework. No. Um, there's one more that I would share and that's grounding and earthing. Um, well, same thing. It's either called grounding or earthing. Um, and it's really just about getting outside and kicking off those shoes if you can mm -hmm. depends you know where, what your weather's like i mean you guys get a lot of snow in different parts of your country over there um but if you can kick off your shoes and connect with the earth it's just an amazing way to really clear your energy from a lot of that what we spoke about before the electromagnetic mm -hmm. fields you know, that we pick up from being inside, from being around computers, from holding on to smartphones every day, from wearing smartwatches on our body, you know, like it all does mess with your own energy. And the best thing to do to counterbalance that is to get out in nature. So we wear, usually wear rubber soled or plastic soled shoes, and that actually stops us mm -hmm. from absorbing, you know, the positive eons that we need. So we need to kick off our shoes and we need to get back to like when we were kids and running around barefoot. Um, you know, if you're in the city, you need to go to a park, you need to find that little bit of garden somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, like even if there's, if it's a concrete jungle, there's usually a tree planted and it might have concrete other than the little square of dirt around the tree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. We just have to find a way. We just have to find a way. And if it is really that hard, then we're going to come, have to come back to yes. visualizing because again, it's intention. So, you know, there's, there can be really deep, beautiful visualizations like I use one in my healing session um, when I have when I see people face to face to kind of bring them back into the room and it's simply you know getting them to visualize standing somewhere in nature and imagining roots coming from the soles mm -hmm. of their feet like a tree and pushing down into the levels and layers mm -hmm. of the earth and I usually connect them with mother earth's core crystal and then with every gentle breath they just breathe the energy of that crystal back along the roots back up through their body and they can take it as far as they like but there's nothing like really stepping outside mm -hmm. into nature so if you have somewhere you love to go and again even if it's once a week that's better mm -hmm. than nothing Absolutely. So, so yeah, so, you know, again, Google is such a great tool when people kind of, you know, have that little interest peaked, we're planting a seed today, they want to know a bit more, um, you know, just, just go and check it out because there's just so much information around mindfulness, breathing exercises and earthing. So, you know, I, I would definitely have a go at it. Wonderful. Now I want people to tell you to tell people your website or anything else that you'd like to share. And, you know, I mentioned at the beginning when I was talking about you, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina in America and you're in, yes. I went to the map. It looked like you were kind of in the forest where you yeah, are in am. Australia. <laughs> and I'm always amazed that because it's energy, it doesn't matter where you're located. You can work with mm -hmm. anyone and with technology today, but the energy, it happens. So Anyone who's listening, tell them about your website and whatever else you'd like to share. Yeah, sure. So, yes, I live in the rainforest in North Queensland, so northern parts of Australia. It's very tropical and beautiful um, in the, on top of a mountain. So I'm an air sign, so I think I just like to be up there. Uh, my website is www.kathleenokeefe.com. So it's just my name, .com. 
Um, I try and keep it up to date. So I do go in and out of it. Um, but I, you know, that's a good way to contact me and it's got the links to my social media, which I'm, I'm mainly on Facebook and Instagram. I, I'm not great at, um, posting a lot of stuff. So Mm -hmm. I'm not someone who bombards you with, with heaps of stuff and you might actually have to come looking for me and like things and comment from time to time. Otherwise we lose each other in that world of social media. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I definitely am easy to contact through email and, and you know, those platforms. Um, yeah, I, I work with people, uh, mainly, I guess my clients have been you guys in America and um, I've had some UK clients and of course all around Australia in different states here. Time and distance does not get in the way of a bloody good healing. So I'm living proof of that. That's for sure. Yeah. (laughs) And she's a trooper. It's we started this at 5 a.m. her time. So you will make it work no matter where you live. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, you know, we, I just get people's best times and days. I've got a little app, you know, again, technology is a wonderful thing uh, called time buddy. And I just, you know, I punch in where everyone is and it just shows me exactly the times and, and I just work it out. So yeah, I, I don't mind getting up early or staying up a little bit late if I have to, because I just love what I do. I just feel so passionate. And again, I am someone who um, I walk my talk you know, mm-hmm. and I, I really, some, you know, I, I have a little bit of a thing about being called a healer. I know I, I have to be because it's what I do, uh, but I kind of feel like I'm more of a facilitator of mm-hmm. a healing space and that's what I'm good at. I hold space for people. I bring some awareness into them and, you know, awareness is key when it comes to healing as well. Once we expand you know, how we look at things or how we kind of take things on board. It's amazing what can shift. So, yeah. So, I, you know, and I really appreciate you having me on the show. Like how exciting for me. This has just been a lovely opportunity. So thank you. Well, thanks for coming on. And, you know, Kathleen, I'd encourage you to check out her website. She's got lots of good information and she has a very unique combining different modalities and has these beautiful cards that she does and takes pictures, which I found really supportive because I've referred Mm. back to them afterwards because she just talked about awareness, which is half of it. And then it's taking action and doing that. So thank you for sharing your gifts today. No worries. Wonderful. Thank you. I mean, you know, our work aligns quite a bit when it comes to healing. So it's pretty cool. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Take care. On next week's episode, I'm going to talk about lessons I learned from the movie Eight Mile. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter Inside and Out. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, Please rate and review Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. See you next Tuesday at 1 p.m.